The Green Llama is a fictional pulp magazine hero of the 1940s. He is commonly portrayed as a powerful Buddhist Lama, dressing in green robes with a red scarf and using his powerful skill set to fight crime. Slightly different versions of the same character also appeared in comic books and on the radio. The Green Lama character is not in the public domain, as the author wisely retained all rights to his creation. Topic Pulps. Topic Original Pulps. The Green Llama first appeared in a short novel entitled The Green Llama in the April 1940 issue of Double Detective magazine. The novel was written by Kendall Foster Crossan using the pseudonym of Richard Foster. Writing in 1976, Crossan recalled that the character was created because the publishers of Double Detective, the Frank Munsey Company, wanted a competitor for The Shadow, which was published by their rivals Street and Smith. The character, partially inspired by explorer Theo's The White Llama Bernard, was originally conceived as The Grey Llama, but tests of the cover art proved to be unsatisfactory, so the color was changed to green. The Green Llama proved to be successful, though not as successful as The Shadow, and Crossan continued to produce Green Llama stories for Double Detective regularly up until March 1943, for a total of 14 stories. Although appearing in a detective fiction magazine, the Green Llama tales can be considered science fiction or supernatural fantasy in that the Green Llama and other characters are possessed of superhuman powers and super science weapons. The Green Llama is an alias of Jethro Dumont, a rich resident of New York City, born July 25, 1903, to millionaires John Pierre Dumont and Janet Lansing. He received his A.B. from Harvard University, M.A. from Oxford, and Ph.D. from the Sorbonne. He also attended Drapung College in Tibet. He inherited his father's fortune, estimated at $10 million, when his parents were both killed in an accident while he was still at Harvard. He then spent 10 years in Tibet studying to be a Lama, a Buddhist spiritual teacher, acquiring many mystical powers in the process. He returned to America intending to spread the doctrines of Tibetan Buddhism, to relieve suffering by removing ignorance, but realized that he could accomplish more by fighting crime, since Americans were not ready to receive spiritual teachings. He never carried a gun, believing that this would make me no better than those I fight. Dumont was also endowed with superhuman powers acquired through his scientific knowledge of radioactive salts. Dumont had two main alter egos, the crime-fighting Green Lama and the Buddhist priest Dr. Pali. Additional alter egos included the adventurer Hugh Gilmore. Among the Green Lama's associates were a Tibetan Lama named Sarong, the college-educated reformed gangster Gary Brown, the post-debutant Evangel Stewart, who would go on to marry Gary, radiologist Dr. Harrison Valco, New York City police detective John Carraway, actor Ken Clayton, Montana-born actress Jean Farrell, and magician Theodore Harron. The Green Llama was also frequently assisted by a mysterious woman known as Maga, whose true identity was never revealed. Crossan's pseudonym Richard Foster was also established as a character and friend of Jethro Dumont. The first six stories have been reprinted in the pulp reprint fanzine High Adventure. Altus Press has reprinted the entire series in three volumes. Topic. Official continuity of Green Llama pulp stories 1923–1933 The Case of the Final Column — by Adam Lance Garcia flashbacks. The Green Llama — Unbound by Adam Lance Garcia flashbacks. Black Bat, The Green Llama, Homecoming by Adam Lance Garcia. 
Shiva Endangered by Kevin Noel Olson. Eye of the Beholder by Adam Lance Garcia 1935 Case of the Crimson Hand by Kendall Foster Crossan Croesus of Murder by Kendall Foster Crossan 1936 Babies for Sale by Kendall Foster Crossan Wave of Death by Kendall Foster Crossan 1937 The Man Who Wasn't There by Kendall Foster Crossan Death's Head Face by Kendall Foster Crossan 1938 The Green Llama Horror in Clay by Adam Lance Garcia The Case of the Clown Who Laughed by Kendall Foster Crossan The Case of the Invisible Enemy by Kendall Foster Crossan The Case of the Mad Maggie by Kendall Foster Crossan The Case of the Vanishing Ships by Kendall Foster Crossan the Case of the Fugitive Fingerprints by Kendall Foster Crossan The Green Llama, Science by Adam Lance Garcia The Case of the Crooked Cane by Kendall Foster Crossan The Case of the Hollywood Ghost by Kendall Foster Crossan 1939 The Case of the Beardless Corpse by Kendall Foster Crossan the Case of the Final Column by Adam Lance Garcia Altis Press. The Green Llama, Unbound by Adam Lance Garcia The Green Llama, Demon's Kiss by Adam Lance Garcia The Green Llama, Crimson Circle by Adam Lance Garcia <laughs> Modern pulps In 2009, Airship 27 Productions and publisher Cornerstone Book Publishers began releasing a series of new pulp anthologies and novels. These new stories treat the original pulps as a vague history, though they slightly shift the time period from the early 1940s to the late 1930s and portray the Lama as younger and less experienced. While the books were produced without the Crossan estate, neither the authors nor the publisher were aware of the estate's claim at the time. The book was produced in good faith under the belief that the character was in the public domain, with no intention to infringe on any unknown rights. One of the stories, set in 1939, sought to portray the origin of the Green Llama. The other stories, while perhaps preceding the pulps in narrative order, would likely be set in the 1940s, possibly preceding the first publication in April 1940. <laughs> <laughs> Volume 1 The first New Green Llama anthology was released on August 14, 2009. The anthology, edited by Ron Fortier, featured three new stories, two short stories, and one novella, written by Kevin Noel Olson, W. Peter Miller, and Adam L. Garcia, respectively. Olson's story, Shiva Endangered, tells one of the Lama's first adventures in Tibet and introduces the MacGuffin known as the Jade Tablet a copy of the legendary Emerald Tablet and explains the origins of the Lama's powers. Garcia's novella, Horror in Clay, is set years later in New York, shortly after Crossan's story, Death's Head Face and pits the Lama and friends against a golem, as well as continuing the narrative of the Jade Tablet and tying the Green Lama into the Cthulhu mythos. Finally, Miller's short, The Studio Spectre, is set in L.A., soon after the events of Horror in Clay, and tells the story of a phantom-like villain terrorizing a film studio. Horror in Clay the cover art by Mike Files, and Jay Piscopo's interior artwork from this volume were nominated for 2009 Pulp Factory Awards. <laughs> <laughs> volume 2, Green Llama, Unbound 
The Green Llama's first full-length novel in nearly 70 years, Green Llama, Unbound, was released July 28, 2010. Written by Adam L. Garcia, it displayed interior and cover art by Mike Files. The novel takes place roughly six months after Studio Spectre, and shortly after the last original pulp story, Beardless Corpse, continuing the Jade Tablet storyline established in Shiva and Angered and Horror in Clay. Unbound pitted the Green Llama against Lovecraft's Great Old Ones and Cthulhu, as well as featured for the first time ever. Details of Dumont's Ten Years in Tibet. In 2011, the book, Garcia, and Files were nominated for several awards including Best Novel, Best Interior Art, and Best Exterior Art in the Pulp Factory Awards, as well as Best Book, Best Cover Art, Best Interior, Best Pulp Revival, and Best Author in the 2011 Pulp Arc Awards. It won for Best Pulp Revival in the Pulp Arc Awards, and Best Pulp Novel and Best Interior Art in the Pulp Factory Awards. <laughs> Airship 27 <laughs> Green Llama, Mystic Warrior Airship 27 released Green Llama Mystic Warrior in 2013, with two original stories from Volume 1 and two new stories. A second edition came out in 2014. The stories and authors in this volume are Shiva Endangered by Kevin Noel Olson, The Menace of the Black Ring by Nick Arlhelm, The Studio Spectre by W. Peter Miller, and the Case of the Hairless Ones", by Robert Craig, with cover art by Isaac L. Nasilla and interior illustrations by Neil Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Moonstone Publishers When it was established that the Green Llama was not in the public domain, Garcia moved his books to Moonstone. Along with new work, Garcia's stories, Horror in Clay, and Unbound, were authorized to be reissued in expanded releases. Garcia has also produced short stories crossing over the Green Llama with other pulp heroes. <laughs> Green Llama, Science Taking place shortly after Horror in Clay, Dumont and his associates fight a malevolent force that arrived in New York aboard a cruise ship filled with people murdered at their own hands. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Green Llama, Demon's Kiss. A short story featured in Moonstones of Monsters and Men. Anthology, The Green Llama and his associates fight a succubus outside a rural hotel. Features original, widescreen, art by Mike Files. <laughs> Green Llama, Crimson Circle A second novel, Green Llama, Crimson Circle, also by Garcia and Files, came out in 2015. The story is a sequel to the very first Green Llama pulp story, Case of the Crimson Hand, while continuing the plot threads left hanging at the end of Unbound. The upcoming comic short, Green Llama and the Death Dealers, by Garcia and Files, will bridge the gap between Unbound and Crimson Circle. A third novel is also planned, currently entitled Green Llama, Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Altus Press 
In addition to reprinting the original pulp stories in 2011 and 2012, Altus Press included a new short story in their third volume, Green Llama and the Case of the Final Column, by Garcia and Files that will tie the original pulps and new pulps stories together. The Final Column will be set immediately after The Case of the Beardless Corpse. Shortly before the events of Green Llama, Unbound, and lays the groundwork for several plot points in Unbound and the upcoming Crimson Circle. It also features Crossan's pseudonym, Richard Foster, as a principal character. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Comic books. Topic: Golden Age Comics. Topic: Prize Comics. The Green Llama's first comic book appearance was in issue number seven of Crestwood Publications Prize Comics, December 1940. The character continued to appear in the title for 27 issues through 1943. All stories were written by Ken Crossan, with art by Mac Raboy and others. In Prize Comics No. 24, he teamed up with Black Owl, Dr. Frost, and Yank and Doodle to take down Frankenstein's monster. This version of the character bears considerable similarities to his pulp counterpart, most notably his costume design. However, this version was more of a sorcerer with the ability to travel through time, resurrect the dead and often battled Lucifer's minions. There were also minor changes to his supporting cast such as Jean Parker and the inclusion of a character known as Tashi Shog a Tibetan liturgic wish meaning, May Prosperity Be. <laughs> <laughs> Spark Publications He then moved to his own title, The Green Llama Spark Publications, published by Kendall Foster Crossan, which lasted for eight issues from December 1944 to March 1946. This iteration character of the Green Llama was somewhat different from his previous versions for example, having the power of flight and wearing a skin-tight costume, although the scripts were still written by Kendall Foster Crossan, who had created the earlier pulp version of the character. Reprints of the Green Llama stories from the eight-issue Spark series are available in two hardcover archive volumes produced by Dark Horse Comics in 2008. Topic: Modern Comics. Topic: AC Comics. Over the last 20 years, the publisher AC Comics has been virtually the only source for the original Golden Age material featuring the Green Llama, and intermittently used the character in their long-running, original series Femforce. In 2004, writer-artist James Ritchie III started production on a two-part graphic novella, entitled Green Llama, Man of Strength, revamping the version from the Spark Publications era. Billing the story in interviews as a superhero mystical murder mystery involving reincarnation. Ritchie never completed the art for part two, due to illness so it was shelved for three years. Green Llama, Man of Strength No. 1 shipped through Diamond Distributors on April 5, 2008, after a requested a one-month delay from Diamond, due to the frowning upon smaller independents having two similar titles shipped simultaneously. The second issue came out in 2009. Topic: Dynamite Comics. 
The Green Llama is currently one of several Golden Age characters appearing in the Dynamite Entertainment comic book series Project Superpowers, by writer Jim Kruger and artist Alex Ross. This version of the Green Llama is vaguely a continuation of his Spark Publications iteration, though his powers have evolved to be more nature-based. The character has been used without authorization of the Crossan estate. Topic: <laughs> Moonstone Moonstone Publishers will be releasing new backup comic stories based on the pulp version of the character under its upcoming Return of the Originals banner. These shorts will be written by Mike W. Barr. Moonstone has released in 2013 a new novel of the character, The Green Llama, Science, written by Adam Lance Garcia. Topic. In other media Topic. Web comics and fiction Green Llama is one of several Golden Age comic characters to make an appearance in Tales of the Living Legends, a webcomic featuring Golden Age art and rewritten stories. The Green Llama plays a key role as a supporting character in the fiction blog, Flyover City. <inaudible> Radio More than three years after the demise of his comic book, The Green Llama was resurrected for a short-lived CBS radio series that ran for 11 episodes from June 5 to August 20, 1949, with the character's voice provided by Paul Fries. This version of The Green Llama was also written by creator Kendall Foster Crossan, along with several co-writers. Topic. Television CBS Television considered producing a television version of The Green Llama for the 1950 season. The proposal never got the green light. Topic. Aerial performance On January 6, 2012, the Green Llama came to life in an aerial performance at the Rubin Museum of Art as part of its Hero, Villain, Yeti exhibit. It was written by Adam Lance Garcia, based on his short story, Case of the Final Column, and performed by New York based Circuitacula. Buddhist element The Green Lama stories display a sympathetic and relatively knowledgeable portrayal of Buddhism, both in the text of the stories and in numerous footnotes. From Crossan's own comments, in his foreword to Robert Weinberg's 1976 reprint of the first Green Llama story, it is clear that this was not proselytism on his part, but simply because he wanted to create a Tibetan Buddhist character and then read everything he could find on the subject. The most frequent reference to Buddhism in the stories is the use of the Sanskrit mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum, usually translated as Om, the jewel on the lotus, which would indeed be used by Tibetan monks. However, the majority of other references to Buddhism in the stories, while accurate, relate to the Theravada form of Buddhism rather than the Tibetan form, with frequent use of Pali words such as Magga, Nibbana, and Dharma, rather than the Sanskrit equivalents that would be used in Tibetan Buddhism. Topic. See also Peter Cannon, Thunderbolt — a similar concept also from the mid-20th century.